Hello traders, this is Hugh. And as you probably know, I, I really like Oanda and I trade with Oanda, but um, their Java platform can be a little bit hard to uh, set up on the first try. So today I'm gonna go through the FX trade platform and I'm gonna show you how to set things up and hopefully that'll make it easier for you to get started and be able to use the platform correctly. So the first thing I should, I'm should i gonna do is go through the, the menu at the top. So just real quick, uh, this is the connection to Wanda. So if you wanna disconnect, you can click here. Connect is there, obviously. If you wanna lock the platform, like let's say you wanna you walk away from your computer for a little bit um, and you don't want your kids touching buttons and making trades, then you can lock it like that. And then if you re-enter your password, you can get back in, no problem. That's kind of cool. The next thing is the account menu. Um, buy and sell, uh, It's you can do it this way, but there are easier ways to do it that I'll show you later. Uh, this will close all, all your trades, um, something that you probably don't want to use too often. Um, the full transaction history menu option, when you click on that, it'll bring up your menu, uh, your uh, trade history in the browser. So it'll look something like this, which is nice. They recently changed their um, format, which looks a lot better. So um, you can see all your trades and your profit, profits and losses. The next thing is gonna be the account details, um, account statistics. These aren't really worth a whole lot. Um, you can see how much you traded your profit and loss during the periods. Um, account details, again, it'll bring up your account details uh, in the browser window. And the next thing is change password. Um, obviously, if you want to change your password there. So the next thing is add or remove funds and reset profit and loss. Uh, that's This is only for practice accounts, uh, obviously. So. I'm just showing this to you on a practice account. So that's where you would do that. Uh, this is really helpful if you want to reset your balances to something that's more realistic. Say you started with like $100,000, but your account is actually only going to be maybe $5,000. Uh, that's a good way to set it to something more realistic so you can see how you would trade um, in, in more realistic, uh, under more realistic conditions. Uh, the next thing is change leverage. So this will open a browser window window also, and you can change the leverage of your account. Um, it'll go all the way down to 10 to one or all the way up to 50 to one. I usually keep it at 50, 50 to one, whatever you choose is up to you. Um, the next thing is gonna be login as another user. If you have another user that you wanna use, uh, create sub account. Sub accounts are useful for uh, separating different strategies. Maybe you want to trade a certain amount of money on this strategy and another amount on another strategy, you can do that. Um, and then to change between the accounts, you go here and you can see the different accounts that are set up. So pretty simple, pretty nice. The only thing that I, the only issue that I've had with this is that they won't let you change the account names or delete accounts. So uh, just keep in mind that if if you uh, create a sub account, you're stuck with the sub account for life. So um, not a big deal, I guess, but something to keep in mind. The next thing is tools. So you can view different parts of this screen or not view them. Um, I don't like to see the action buttons, so I usually take the action buttons out. But you can um, keep them in, and you can take out all these other elements also. Uh, font size, if you want something bigger. I think 12 is cool, but whatever you want to do. Uh, color scheme, there's different color schemes that are built in. Uh, you can do like a blue color scheme and, or you can do a, um, create your own custom theme, which I did. So for each element of the screen, you can set the color either by hex, um, either RGB. Uh, you can Google that if you don't know what that is, uh, or you can just click on this and it'll bring up a color palette that you can choose from. Um, it's really useful when you're, when you create different profiles, and we'll get to that in a minute, but when you create different profiles, you can set the profiles to different accounts. And 
that helps because you can tell by the color of the screen which account you're in, which is really useful sometimes when you're in the middle of some hectic trading. Um, so that's the color scheme. I'm going to set it back to my custom, which I like. Um, next thing is language, if you need that. Um, always on top, you can choose which window is always on top of the other windows um, in the case of when you detach windows. So let me show you what I mean. So let's take this account summary, for example. If we want to, maybe you're using multiple screens or you just want to keep this somewhere on the side. Uh, for any of these windows, you can click this icon here and it'll pop out um, the that information in that window, in a separate window. So when you close it, it'll just pop back there. So that's pretty useful. So that's what always on top is. So it will keep whatever you check here always on top. Um, there's a, perfect, a PIP profit calculator, I'm sorry. And uh, you can you can measure before you trade how much, how many units you could use based on your open and close. And um, for the open, you could use the market rate. For the close, you could use the stop loss. And then you could see how much you're losing. Or you, on the close, you could use the take profit and you can see how much you're gaining. So that's kind of useful. Um, the next thing is user preferences. And there's some key ones in here. Um, right out of the box, there's a crosshair on the uh, chart, which I don't like. So I usually uncheck that. But if you do check that, then you're going to get a crosshair like that, which is useful sometimes. But I, I prefer just the horizontal. So I take that off like so. Uh, another thing you might want to do is ignore weekend data because it just gives you a flat line. Um, or you might want, want to leave it in. It's up to you. but uh, that helps. On the quotes, you can determine what quotes are seen in this um, in this quote panel here, and which which quotes you uh, which pairs you can trade. So it's pretty easy. Just add or remove whatever you want. Um, periods you can also add or remove. Select the time periods. Uh, this is kind of nice because they have a whole bunch of different time frames, and uh, you might not need things like the two hour or the three hour. So this is a good place to remove them. Um, On to trading. So the interesting thing here, in my opinion, is the default order size. If there's an order size that you want to start off with, you can input that here. You can say like a thousand units. And every time you click the buy or sell button, it'll default to a thousand units. And you can change that if you want to, but it might be nice to have it there. Um, another important thing here is show confirmation windows and one click trades. Uh, or confirm one click trades. So confirmation windows pop up after you say, okay, I want to put on this trade. You set your stop loss, you stop your, you set your units. Um, there's just another window after that, that pops up and says, okay, you're confirmed for this. And I, I find that kind of irritating. So I take that off. I uncheck that. But, um, I think it is good to have confirm one click trades on because one click trades allow you to just obviously click once and enter a trade. But, uh, it's good to know that you got in there, I guess. And it's, um, I think it's a little safer in my opinion, but I always leave that checked and I don't use one, one click trades anyway. So I just leave that in as kind of a, a safety default, um, locale. If you want to mess with the time zone, that's fine. I just leave it, um, to the default system time zone. And if you want to do sounds, if you're into sounds like, you know when your order is hit or your stop loss is hit you can you can browse for different wave files here and you can um or mp3s too and you can set those sounds to those actions okay moving on uh the next option is save current profile so let's say you set up this profile you have your default uh default units you have your color scheme all set up before you exit the program, you want to save the current profile. Uh, that's very important because otherwise when you come back, it's just going to default to whatever you had before. So save that and it'll show up here in the profile manager. So you can manage different profiles and 
if you have different profiles, you can set them to your different accounts. And this is where I was mentioning that setting the background to different colors really comes in help useful in knowing which account you're in. And you know, you might not you might execute the wrong trade in the wrong account. So this helps you keep those things separated. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, resources, this is just a bunch of news and uh, the OANA things that are useful, the heat map, market hours, stuff like that. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Window, you can, these are just window functions. And if you need some help, there's some help there. Um, now moving down into the window itself, there are some cool things that you can do. Uh, you can filter by currency pair. So if you only want to see your Euro pairs, you can put in Euro and it'll filter by that. Um, the tabs here show your open orders, your current positions, exposure is by currency pair. Um, activity, it'll show all your activity recently, including your interest. So that's good. Um, and if you click this button here, this is something that I think is really important. Um, you can set up the column headers. And uh, I usually check these boxes. Um, these other things are not really important to me and just clutter up the screen in my opinion. So, um, and you can filter by markets, um, types, columns, but this is generally what I use. Okay, so moving over to the account summary area, um, there's this thing that you, it's similar in that you can choose what information is displayed on the, uh, on the, when you shrink the table down. So uh, for example, I don't use this margin closeout value, all this stuff, margin alert, I, I never even get close to margin, so margin called. So uh, I just uncheck those, but if you wanna see everything, you can pull down the uh, arrow here, and that'll show everything. If you wanna see the condensed version, you can just do that. Um, quote panel here, as we saw in the menu, you can choose which which uh, quotes you want you want to see and or and be able to trade. Uh, but you can also click this gear here, and you can choose the quotes. Um, if you want to see a quote list, which is might be easier for you, you can do this. Uh, and if you mouse over the left side, that's a sell. If you mouse over the right side, you'll buy in that currency pair. Kind of cool. Um, this button here activates one click trading. So all you would do is you put your units into here. And then as soon as you click buy or sell, you'll be executed for that many units. Uh, something that I don't really use too often, but if you like it, if you're a, maybe a scalper or something that might be useful. Okay. Let's get into the order execution window. Um, when you click on buy or sell here, here you bring up the window, uh, but you can also change your, if you want to change your mind to buy or sell, you can change it up here. Um, you can change the number of units. So let's say a thousand for this. And then you can set your stop loss by clicking on this. And then if you also have a take profit trailing loss, trailing stop, you can do that here. Um, the useful thing, or the thing that I really like about this screen is that you can see that your stop loss in dollars and in pips. So that makes it really easy to tailor your number of units to your your risk, say 1%, 2%, whatever you're risking. So I think that's really nice. Uh, if you want to set a limit order, uh, same thing here, just the number of units and the price that you want it executed at. And even though it says a limit order, this also execute stop orders. So um, yeah, it'll execute a trade in either either direction. So just enter it here. And then let's get to the chart screen. Um, to change the type of chart, you just pull down here. You, if you like, you know, these types of bars or whatever, you can do that. But I, I prefer candlesticks. To change the color of the candlesticks, you just click on the candlestick and you can set the rising and falling color. Um, time frame, obviously you can choose that and then the pair and the only pairs that will be available are the ones that are listed in the quote panel. Uh, you can buy and sell here. Uh, there are some chart options. I just use a default 
uh, you, you might want to like take off the grid or something but uh, other than that I just use the default uh, you can use your trend lines here and when you click on the chart itself it'll bring up a menu uh, you can do a limit buy or sell buy at market show news events and then you can add your studies um, you know your whatever indicators you want to use uh, I think they're charting is kind of crappy actually so I don't use any indicators on the charts but um if you want to use it there that's where it is uh, on the side here the scroll bar moves the chart up and down this scroll bar condenses or expands in the vertical direction and this is the horizontal obviously something like that and that's about it so I hope that was useful uh, I went through that pretty quickly but I think it I think you can get it um, it just it's just a matter of learning it it's not a big uh, deal but sometimes things are kind of hidden and you don't know how to fix things so I hope that was a quick and easy tutorial on how to get started with the Oanda FX trade uh, Java platform and if you have any questions leave a comment below okay thanks for watching